Graham James, one of the most despicable deviants in Canadian history. There, we've said it. Here are the facts. Last March, this sex predator was sentenced to a paltry two years behind bars. Tap on the wrist. A concurrent sentence that allowed him to serve time on two sentences simultaneously. And yesterday, the Crown, the Crown made its appeal for justice, asking for a harsher sentence. I should certainly hope so. More time for his terrible crime, something closer to the punishment he deserved in the first place. The Manitoba Court of Appeal has reserved decision on the matter. They're thinking about it. They'll think it over. They're taking the appeal under advisement. Folks, I hope that we'll see a new sentence that makes a lot more sense. But frankly, I'm not holding my breath that we'll see a triumph of Canadian common sense. Let's review uh, Graham James' rap sheet. The systematic rape of the young boys in his care. Their abuse, a sickening abuse of his power as a junior hockey coach. A colossal betrayal of the trust placed in him is the man who's supposed to make NHL dreams come true. Instead, he inflicts a, a nightmare on a number of his targets that last year after year after year. We're talking about hundreds of rapes per victim, a lifetime of post-traumatic suffering. Any judge looking for character witnesses of Graham James need look no further than the targets of this sexual predator. Let, let's hear what they had to say after the last sentence was passed this past March. He took the time and energy to sexually abuse me every chance he got. And believe me, he will do it again and again and again, if ever given the chance. He has no remorse. A monster who will sexually assault children should never be let loose in society, ever. Uh, uh, the sentencings uh, don't uh, come close to the damage that it leaves in its wake, and, and that's been, been very clear to me uh, here today. The thing is, a lifetime inside is the only thing that could, could uh, stop him. Because as soon as he gets out, as soon as he gets free, he's going to do it again. Graham James is, is, a, is a predator. A person like Graham James, there has to be a better system. There has to be a better way to deal with a monster like Graham who repeatedly can, uh, abused uh, children. It, it's, it's unfathomable that a guy like Graham gets uh, two years uh, for what he did. But at the same time, he is going to jail. He'll, he'll be in jail tonight. He's going to a penitentiary, and that's a good thing. Hundreds of rapes on each of those men when they were very young. Hundreds on each of them. Two-year sentence. In order of appearance, uh, you saw former NHLers Theo Fleury and Sheldon Kennedy and former junior hockey players Todd Holt and Greg Gilhooley. Now many years later, we can call them victors of the sex abuse at the hands of James. They made their feelings clear. Graham James is a sexual predator who will not stop. Sheldon Kennedy will tell us again in just a few minutes that the time did not fit the crime, that Graham James inflicted a lifetime's worth of pain and misery. Greg Gilhooley, at the end of that last clip, expressed some optimism at the end, that a jail sentence is better than nothing, and he's correct, but it's just not right. In this round of so-called justice, a perp can rape two children hundreds of times each and only get two years in the slammer because of a hug-a-thug, unaccountable judge clearly ignoring the heartfelt victim impact statements and soaking up the Graham James sob story like a, an ultra-absorbent box of bathroom tissue, buying into Graham James' crocodile tears of remorse, even feeling sorry for him for all the public scrutiny he's been under. And if that was punishment enough, but it gets worse. Graham James, less than a year into this joke of a sentence, is actually now, right now, eligible to apply for full parole, less than a year in. Once this Crown Appeal process is done, he now has that right under our so-called justice system. Let's just pull out the calculator and make a simple chilling equation. Two years down to one year for hundreds of rapes of Theo Fleury and Todd Holt. This disgusting excuse for a human being could average less than a day in jail for each rape of a child. Graham James Victor Theo Fleury calls Canada a Disneyland for pedophiles. Is he wrong? The Manitoba Court of Appeals has the power to actually fix this. They could reverse this Mickey Mouse sentence if they wanted to. 
Our justice system stands on the edge and can still be tipped in the right direction, if they choose to, to set a precedent for much stiffer sentences for those who target children, instead of greater leniency for monsters like Graham James. This is a no-brainer. We as a country need to do more to protect our kids. It's time to send a message loud and clear to make things right. It's time for stronger laws with real teeth. It's time to put victims first and make it clear that you cannot rape children and get little more than a tap on the wrist. It's time for some real justice. And that's Canadian common sense. For an immediate reaction to Graham James' fate, we turn to another victor over sexual abuse. And we don't call them victims. We don't call Sheldon Kennedy or, or Theo or Todd a victim. They are victors over sexual abuse. They're not continually victims of, of Graham James, but they were very much victims of Graham James. Sheldon Kennedy, I, I want to ask you this right off the hop. One of the things that uh, Graham James' uh, lawyer said uh, yesterday during the appeal uh, process was that Graham James is a changed man. Now, Theo doesn't believe he's a changed man. You don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't know anybody who really does. But I'm worried that maybe the judge buys that simply because the defense lawyer said so. Your take. Well, I totally agree that uh, uh, the judges and, and the defense uh, attorneys can, can absolutely paint uh, not a bad picture of this type of criminal. There's no question in my mind that Graham James isn't changed. I mean, you know, all the... The uh, research shows that the, the ability for pedophiles to uh, to be rehabilitated is is uh, next to nil and probably nil. We can manage them, but they can't be rehabilitated. And especially when he talks about 30 hours of rehabilitation, I mean, we're talking like uh, you know a, a, a work one week of work. And uh, if somebody can change what they've been doing for uh, 50 years of their life in a week of work, then I'd like to know that process. Well, the other thing that's uh, completely disingenuous is that uh, uh, they point out that he's not been uh, caught for anything, not been arrested for anything lately. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. Uh, he wasn't arrested for decades uh, while he'd been involved with, with, with you and Theo and, and, and many others. Uh, does that mean because he wasn't arrested that he wasn't doing what he was doing? I mean, as I say, I'm being polite by calling it disingenuous. It's, it's BS. Well... Yeah, and I mean, if we, you know, if we look at the FBI studies, I mean, they say the average pedophile affects up to 150 kids before they're caught, if they're ever caught. So, you know, and, and I mean, we look at the, during the sentence hearing, I mean, we had the, uh, when it was sitting in court, the, uh, um, they had the letters for, uh, you know, in support of Graham and some pleas from some friends that he had down in Peru and Guadalajara and et cetera. And they all talked about how nice Graham was to their eight kids and how he gave them gifts. And I mean, the exact same grooming process that was in place with us. And I think that, you know, there's a real lack of un, uh, un, uh, misunderstanding, I think, Charles, when it comes to with the judges and so forth. And I think that there's a mindset a uh, little bit of, you know, pull the bootstraps up and get back at it and, you know, away you go. And the reality is, is that is just not the way it happens. I mean, I think that there is there's such a lack of knowledge around the impact of this type of crime. It's a, such an invisible piece that uh, we really need to be able to make visible for change and continue to be able to continually push for change here. Well, you talk about the grooming. I mean, a ped is a ped is a ped. And he's behaving like a ped in Peru and he's behaving like a, a ped in, in Mexico. That's why he was doing those things. Uh, you talk about the grooming. Uh, are, are we supposed to believe, and more important, is a judge supposed to believe that because he wasn't picked up by the Peruvian police because they didn't do an investigation on him or the Mexican police didn't do an investigation on him, therefore he's a changed man? It just, it's, it's crazy. Well, it is, it is crazy, Charles, and I think that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I still haven't heard, I still am not clear, I don't think the public has really heard of what Graham James was, where, was, where he was working and what he was doing down there. Uh, you know, we've he heard some rumors of, you know, he was working online, um, you know, with some companies that, uh, you know, deal with children. So we're not sure exactly what was going on, but uh, I think the, the, you know, there is a lack of understanding of the impact that this crime has, I believe leave on society as a whole the cost to our country you know if we look in the billions of dollars uh, you know the victims of this type of crime I mean they end up in our health care systems they end up in our prisons uh, and they just you know create unhealthy communities so when we look at the widespread damage that uh, Graham James has inflicted I mean you go back to Swift Current and you look at I mean he's affected that city 
uh, not just the victims directly, but that whole city because he manipulated that whole city and that's the way these individuals operate. And I think that there's a huge, huge lack of understanding when it comes to that. And I think if we can raise that awareness, we're going to be able to keep and continue to change uh, the laws around this. And the reason I'm asking the question is about Mexico and the reason I'm asking about Peru, I'm asking to make the point that he's behaving like a pet and there's every reason to believe that when he's allowed out and it's likely to happen, unfortunately, sooner than later, he's going to continue. And now he's not uh, got any papers to allow him to leave the country, so he'll continue in Canada. And yes, I'm, I'm sure that uh, some police officers may do whatever they can to, uh, to track him, but uh, the leopard does not change the spots, Sheldon. Well, you're absolutely right, right uh, Charles, and I mean, I, I agree with that, but, uh, you know, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, he's not going to get life, life in prison, we know that, um, you know, so we have to be able to try to manage that as best we can, and I think, you know, pedophiles, I mean, Graham James operated in the hockey world for 20 years, he operated with a lot of media around for 20 years because of our ignorance and our indifference, so in my you know, I mean, that's the way those guys operate. So if it, when I think of this, I think that we need to really empower the bystander. We look at Jerry Sandusky. How did Jerry Sandusky operate for, you know, all these years within, a, within an organization? Because of ignorance and indifference. We need to give people and society the confidence to understand and to realize and to, to really know how a Graham James comes into their lives and operates in their lives. It's not this guy standing around the corner with a knife held and being held to your throat. Those ones we can understand. So the Graham Jameses of the world, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, really will have the wool pulled over their eyes. So somehow we really need to educate and be able to manage this because we're never going to put an end to pedophilia within Canada. But what we can do is empower ourselves through education to do the best we can to recognize it, pick up it and, and uh, you know, disclose it and help our kids. Sheldon Kennedy, thank you very much for the visit. Thanks, Charles. Sheldon Kennedy in Calgary. If you want to hear from me on this or any of the topic, be a citizen of Adler Nation, send email. Charles Adler at sunmedia.ca. We read them all. Your opinions matter to us a, a great deal.